Chapter Two, Part Six of the Legend of the Jews by Rabbi Louis Ginsburg, Volume One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Kirsten Ferreri. The Legends of the Jews by Rabbi Louis Ginsburg, Chapter Two, Part Six. The Sickness of Adam. When Adam had lived to be nine hundred and thirty years old. A sickness seized him, and he felt that his days were drawing to an end. He summoned all his descendants and assembled them before the doors of the house of worship in which he had always offered his prayers to God, to give them his last blessing. His family were astonished to find him stretched out on the bed of sickness, for they did not know what pain and suffering were. They thought he was overcome with longing after the fruits of paradise, and for lack of them was depressed. Set announced his willingness to go to the gates of paradise and beg God to let one of his angels give him of its fruits. But Adam explained to them what sickness and pain are, and that God had inflicted them upon him as a punishment for his sin. Adam suffered violently; tears and groans were wrung from him. Eve sobbed and said, "Adam, my lord, give me half of thy sickness. I will gladly bear it. Is it not on account of me that this hath come upon thee? On account of me thou undergoest pain and anguish." Adam bade Eve go with Seth to the gates of paradise and entreat God to have mercy upon him, and send his angel to catch up some of the oil of life flowing from the tree of his mercy and give it to his messengers. The ointment would bring him rest and banish the pain consuming him. On his way to paradise, Seth was attacked by a wild beast. Eve called out to the assailant, "How durst thou lay hand on the image of God?" The ready answer came, "It is thine own fault." Hadst thou not opened thy mouth to eat of the forbidden fruit, my mouth would not be open now to destroy a human being. But Seth remonstrated, "Hold thy tongue, desist from the image of God until the day of judgment." And the beast gave way, saying, "See, I refrain myself from the image of God," and it slunk away to its covert. Arrived at the gates of paradise, even Seth began to cry bitterly, and they besought God with many lamentations to give them oil from the tree of His mercy. For hours they prayed thus. At last, the archangel Michael appeared and informed them that he came as the messenger of God to tell them that their petition could not be granted. Adam would die in a few days, and as he was subject to death, so would be all his descendants. Only at the time of the resurrection, and then only to the pious, the oil of life would be dispensed, together with all the bliss and all the delights of paradise. Returned to Adam, they reported what had happened, and he said to Eve, "What misfortune didst thou bring upon us when thou didst arouse great wrath? See, death is the portion of all our race. Call hither our children and our children's children, and tell them the manner of our sinning." And while Adam lay prostrate upon the bed of pain, Eve told them the story of their fall. The Legends of the Jews by Rabbi Louis Ginsburg. Eve's story of the fall. After I was created, God divided paradise and all the animals therein between Adam and me. The east and the north were assigned to Adam together with the male animals. I was mistress of the west and the south and all the female animals. Satan, smarting under the disgrace of having been dismissed from the heavenly host, resolved to bring about our ruin and avenge himself upon the cause of his discomfiture. He won the serpent over to his side and pointed out to him that before the creation of Adam, the animals could enjoy all that grew in paradise. And now they were restricted to the weeds. To drive Adam from paradise would therefore be for the good of all. The Satan demurred, for he stood in awe of the wrath of God. But Satan calmed his fears and said, "Do thou but become my vessel, and I shall speak a word through thy mouth, wherewith thou wilt succeed in seducing man." The serpent thereupon suspended himself from the wall surrounding paradise to carry on his conversation with me from without. And this happened at the very moment when my two guardian angels had betaken themselves to heaven to supplicate the Lord. I was quite alone, therefore. And when Satan assumed the appearance of an angel bent over the wall of paradise and intoned seraphic songs of praise, I was deceived and thought him an angel. A conversation was held between us. Satan speaking through the mouth of the serpent, "Art thou Eve? Yes, it is I. What art thou doing in paradise? The Lord has put us here to cultivate it and eat of its fruits." That is good, yet you eat not of all the trees. That we do, excepting a single one, the tree that stands in the midst of paradise. Concerning it alone, God has forbidden us to eat of it. Else, the Lord said, you will die. The serpent made every effort to persuade me that I had naught to fear, that God knew that in the day that Adam and I ate of the fruit of the tree, we should be as He Himself. It was jealousy that had made Him say, "You shall not eat of it." 
In spite of all his urging, I remained steadfast, and refused to touch the tree. Then the serpent engaged to pluck the fruit for me. Thereupon I opened the gate of paradise, and he slipped in. Scarcely was he within when he said to me, I repent of my words. I would rather not give thee of the fruit of the forbidden tree. It was but a cunning device to tempt me more. He consented to give me of the fruit only after I swore to make my husband eat of it, too. This is the oath he made me take. By the throne of God, by the cherubim, and by the tree of life, I shall give my husband of this fruit, that he may eat too. Thereupon the serpent ascended the tree, and injected his poison, the poison of evil inclination, into the fruit, and bent the branch on which it grew to the ground. I took hold of it, but I knew at once that I was stripped of the righteousness in which I had been clothed. I began to weep, because of it, and because of the oath the serpent had forced from me. The serpent disappeared from the tree, while I sought leaves wherewith to cover my nakedness, but all the trees within my reach had cast off their leaves at the moment when I ate of the forbidden fruit. There was only one that retained its leaves, the fig tree, the very tree, the fruit of which had been forbidden to me. I summoned Adam, and by means of blasphemous words I prevailed upon him to eat of the fruit. As soon as it had passed his lips, he knew his true condition, and he exclaimed against me, Thou wicked woman, what hast thou brought down upon me? Thou hast removed me from the glory of God. At the same time, Adam and I heard the archangel Michael blow his trumpet, and all the angels cried out, Thus saith the Lord, Come ye with me to paradise, and hearken unto the sentence which I will pronounce on Adam. We hid ourselves, because we feared the judgment of God. Sitting in his chariot, drawn by cherubim, the Lord, accompanied by angels uttering his praise, appeared in paradise. At his coming, the bare trees again put forth leaves. His throne was erected by the tree of life, and God addressed Adam. Adam, where dost thou keep thyself in hiding? Thinkest thou I cannot find thee? Can a house conceal itself from its architect? Adam tried to put the blame on me, who had promised to hold him harmless before God, and I in turn accused the serpent. But God dealt out justice to all three of us. To Adam he said, Because thou didst not obey my commands, but did hearken unto the voice of thy wife, cursed is the ground in spite of thy work. When thou dost cultivate it, it will not yield thee its strength. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Thou wilt suffer many a hardship. Thou wilt grow weary, and find no rest. Bitterly oppressed, thou shalt never taste of any sweetness. Thou shalt toil greatly, and yet not gain wealth. Thou shalt grow fat, and yet cease to live. And the animals over which thou art the master will rise up against thee, because thou didst not keep my command. Upon me God pronounced this sentence. Thou shalt suffer anguish in childbirth, and grievous torture. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children. And in the hour of travail, when thou art near to lose thy life, thou wilt confess and cry, Lord, Lord, save me this time, and I shall never again indulge in carnal pleasure. And yet thy desire shall ever and ever be unto thy husband. At the same time all sorts of diseases were decreed upon us. God said to Adam, Because thou didst turn thy face from my covenant, I will inflict seventy plagues upon thy flesh. The pain of the first plague shall lay hold on thy eyes, the pain of the second plague upon thy hearing, and one after the other all the plagues shall come upon thee. The serpent God addressed thus, Because thou becamest the vessel of the evil one, deceiving the innocent, cursed art thou above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Thou shalt be robbed of the food thou wast wont to eat, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Upon thy breast and thy belly shalt thou go, and of thy hands and of thy feet thou shalt be deprived. Thou shalt not remain in possession of thy ears, nor of thy wings, nor of any of thy limbs wherewith thou didst seduce the woman and her husband, bringing them to such a pass that they must be driven forth from paradise. And I will put enmity between thee and the seed of man. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel, until the day of judgment. The Legends of the Jews by Rabbi Louis Ginsburg The Death of Adam on the last day of Adam's life, Eve said to him, Why should I go on living when thou art no more? How long shall I have to linger on after thy death? Tell me this. Adam assured her she would not tarry long. They would die together, and be buried together in the same place. He commanded her not to touch his corpse until an angel from God had made provision regarding it, and she was to begin at once to pray to God until his soul escaped from his body. While Eve was on her knees in prayer, an angel came and bade her rise. Eve, arise from thy penance, he commanded. Behold, thy husband has left his mortal coil. Arise, and see his spirit go up to his Creator, to appear before him. And, lo, she beheld a chariot of light, drawn by four shining eagles, and preceded by angels. 
In this chariot lay the soul of Adam, which the angels were taking to heaven. Arrived there, they burnt incense until the clouds of smoke enveloped the heavens. Then they prayed to God to have mercy upon his image and the work of his holy hands. In her awe and fright, Eve summoned Seth, and bade him look upon the vision and explain the celestial sights beyond her understanding. She asked, Who may the two Ethiopians be who are adding their prayers to thy father's? Seth told her they were the sun and moon, turned black because they could not shine in the face of the Father of Light. Scarcely had he spoken when an angel blew a trumpet, and all the angels cried with awful voices, Blessed be the glory of the Lord by his creatures, for he has shown mercy unto Adam, the work of his hands. A seraph then seized Adam, and carried him off to the river Acheron, washed him three times, and brought him before the presence of God, who sat upon his throne, and stretching out his hand lifted Adam up, and gave him over to the archangel Michael, with the words, Raise him to the paradise of the third heaven, and there shalt thou leave him until the great and fearful day ordained by me. Michael executed the divine behest, and all the angels sang a song of praise, extolling God for the pardon he had accorded Adam. Michael now entreated God to let him attend to the preparation of Adam's body for the grave. Permission being given, Michael repaired to earth, accompanied by all the angels. When they entered the terrestrial paradise, all the trees blossomed forth, and the perfume wafted thence lulled all men into slumber except Seth alone. Then God said to Adam, as his body lay on the ground, If thou hadst kept my commandment, they would not rejoice who brought thee hither. But I tell thee, I will turn the joy of Satan and his consorts into sorrow, and thy sorrow shall be turned into joy. I will restore thee to thy dominion, and thou shalt sit upon the throne of thy seducer, while he shall be damned with those who hearken unto him. Thereupon, at the bidding of God, the three great archangels covered the body of Adam with linen, and poured sweet-smelling oil upon it. With it they interred also the body of Abel, who had laid unburied since Cain had slain him, for all the murderer's efforts to hide it had been in vain. The corpse again and again sprang forth from the earth, and a voice issued thence, proclaiming, No creature shall rest in the earth until the first one of all has returned the dust to me of which it was formed. The angels carried the two bodies to paradise, Adam's and Abel's. The latter in all this time had been lying on a stone on which angels had placed it, and there they buried them both on the spot whence God had taken the dust wherewith to make Adam. God called unto the body of Adam, 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 and it answered, Lord, here am I. Then God said, I told thee once, Dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Now I promise thee resurrection. I will awaken thee on the day of judgment, when all the generations of men that spring from thy loins shall arise from the grave. God then sealed up the grave, that none might do him harm during the six days to elapse, until his rib should be restored to him, through the death of Eve. The Legends of the Jews by Rabbi Louis Ginsburg The Death of Eve the interval between Adam's death and her own, Eve spent in weeping. She was distressed in particular that she knew not what had become of Adam's body, for none except Seth had been awake while the angels interred it. When the hour of her death drew nigh, Eve supplicated to be buried in the self-same spot in which the remains of her husband rested. She prayed to God, Lord of all power, remove not thy maidservant from the body of Adam, from which thou didst take me, from whose limbs thou didst form me. Permit me, who am an unworthy and sinning woman, to enter into his habitation. As we were together in paradise, neither separated from the other, as together we were tempted to transgress thy law, neither separated from the other, so, O Lord, separate not us now. To the end of her prayer she added the petition, raising her eyes heavenward, Lord of the world, receive my spirit. And she gave up her soul to God. The archangel Michael came and taught Seth how to prepare Eve for burial, and three angels descended and interred her body in the grave with Adam and Abel. Then Michael spoke to Seth, Thus shalt thou bury all men that die until the resurrection day. And again, having given him this command, he spoke, Longer than six days you shall not mourn. The repose of the seventh day is the token of resurrection in the latter day, for on the seventh day the Lord rested from all the work which he had created and made. Though death was brought into the world through Adam, yet he cannot be held responsible for the death of men. Once on a time he said to God, I am not concerned about the death of the wicked, but I should not like the pious to reproach me and lay the blame for their death upon me. I pray thee, make no mention of my guilt. And as God promised to fulfill his wish, therefore when a man is about to die, God appears to him, and bids him set down in writing all he has done during his life, for he tells him, 
thou art dying by reason of thy evil deeds. The record finished, God orders him to seal it with his seal. This is the writing God will bring out on the judgment day, and to each will be made known his deeds. As soon as life is extinct in a man, he is presented to Adam, whom he accuses of having caused his death. But Adam repudiates the charge. I committed but one trespass. Is there any among you, and be he the most pious, who has not been guilty of more than one? End of chapter 2, part 6